Today's video is brought to you by Triple Sleeve TCG, where you can get all of your bundles and playset splits for any upcoming sets when available. Check them out at TripleSleeveTCG.com. Hey guys, welcome back to another deck profile. I'm Richard, and today I got a PBD deck for you guys. So Blasters are back, we got Shadow Paladin back, and the deck is pretty good for budget players. I'll say that as much. Um, the aesthetic is quite the same as the traditional Shadow Paladin with retiring your own stuff to gain power. Um, and the deck is moderately fun for a budget deck. Uh, I just wanted to show you guys what I got for that deck. So I'll just get right into it. For the starter, we're gonna do the full ride chain. So we got full bow, but you can, you know, you can do any starter you want. Um, Blaster Javelin is our next uh, grade one for the ride deck. Javelin skill is when you ride Blaster Dark on top of it, you look at the top card of your deck, call it to rear's rest. And um, if it isn't a unit card, you have to discard it. Um, you don't have to worry about this for this deck. We don't run any orders, so you don't have to really worry about that. The second skill is continuous rearguard circle. If you have a Vanguard with Blaster in its name, this gets 2k. So this is really important because uh, it's not just a 2k boost or 10k booster, it's a 10k beater as well. So you can use it to, you know, have an 8k behind it and still swing for 18, hitting those magic numbers against your opponent. Um, next up for the ride line, we got Blaster Dark. Uh, Blaster Dark still got its twin drive skill, which is cool. Um, it's when this unit is placed on van or rear, you count must one, retire another rear guard, choose one of your opponent's rear guards, retire it, and this unit gets a drive check. So what's cool about this is uh, in the main deck, uh, if you use the skill and you have it in the front row, if you drive check into uh, Amartanoa, the uh, <laughs> the over trigger, um, your units gain the ability to perform a drive check. And since Blaster Dark will have drive plus one, it will still be able to twin drive once you get the over trigger. Pretty dope, which is cool in the way that they wrote the card. So I like that a lot. The second skill Blaster Dark is during your turn, uh, if your rear guard was retired this turn, this gets 5k. So it's a 15k beater, just continuous if you use Phantom Blaster Dragon skill. Really dope. Uh, 15k beaters are really important in the early meta right now. So I like kind of like how even though it's a budget deck, there's some beat sticking going on with this deck. And last but not least for the ride deck, we got Phantom Blaster Dragon. When this is placed on Vanguard Circle, choose a card with Blaster in its name from your soul, call it. So you get a free target, you can call out Blaster Dark, obviously, just to get a 15k beat stick. You can use Dark Skill if you want to retire something. And obviously, as you Persona Ride, riding on top of copies, you'll just call out more Phantom Blaster Dragons. So it's a really good skill for a ride ability. Uh, act. Once per turn, you Counter Blast 1, and you retire 3 rear guards. Choose up to 2 of your opponent's rear guards, retire them. This unit gets 10k and a critical until the end of turn. I like that it's Counter Blast 1. So minimizes counter blast use. The retire three is a little steep, but we do have cards to kind of like mitigate that. But also just being able to pick your opponent's rear guards, like you get to pick which cards you want to retire. Really nice. Uh, uh, good uh, Seraph Snow and Magnolia matchup because you can pick off those really annoying rear guards that you just don't want to deal with. Um, and getting that 10k in a crit for counter blast one effectively because the retiring rear guards is really whatever since building a board is super easy in this deck. Um, it's nice. It's really nice in terms of counter blast costs. So I like this PBD a lot. On to the main deck. We got our three copies of our Phantom Blaster Dragons. Uh, Persona riding is good. Multiple copies good. Also just the more you ride Phantom Blaster Dragon, you can keep calling stuff in the soul with Blaster in its name. So the minute you Persona ride, you get another PBD. So really cool. All right, next for grade threes, uh, not too much of a budget card, but I do think it's somewhat of a necessity in this deck because countercharging is always good. So if you had to throw a little money, I think Fasado is worth the investment. So Knight of War Damage Fasado uh, cannot be chosen by your opponent's card effects. So you cannot be, you know, cannot be prisoned, not retired, can't be chosen, right? So good card. <laughs> Uh, other skill is rear guard auto when this unit's attack hits, counter charge, soul charge. Um, a lot of cards in this deck use soul. And every time you ride Phantom Blaster Dragon, you lose a soul because you're calling something out from it. 
So being able to gain more soul is really important. And then also the counter charging does help if your opponent's trying to deny you counter blast uh, for that turn so that you can't use PVD skill. So Fasado, I feel like, is a really uh, good investment card. So that's it for the grade threes. Uh, next up for grade twos, we got the boy Blaster Dark. Uh, went over Blaster Dark skill earlier. It's still a good beat stick. Uh, it retires stuff, and um, it can gain an extra drive check. So if you have this in the front row and you get in, go into Armar to Noah for the over trigger, you still get twin drive off Blaster Dark. So decent. It's a, it's a beat stick too, so can't go wrong with that. Next up... And uh, we're running four copies of Darkness Maiden Maka. So Maka helps fill your board. The first skill is when it's placed on rear, if you have a Vanguard with Blaster in its name, this gets 5k. So if it's, the minute it's placed, it gets 5k, which is nice. Then you Soul Blast 1, retire another rear guard, look at the top five, choose a grade one or less, and call it. Uh, your call targets are pretty much going to most part want to be your Karens or your Brunners, um, it's just a card that helps you fill your board for a Soul Blast. The fact that it's also another 15k beater is nice. You throw an 8k booster or just add like a booster behind it, you know, swing for those bigger numbers. Um, good, good card. <laughs> um, next up for grade twos, doesn't really match the aesthetic, but still helps the deck a little bit. I'm running three Pentagleam Sorceress. Pendagleam is there uh, for the second skill, which is auto. When it's placed on rear, you look at the top card of your deck, put it on the top or bottom, and if you put it on the bottom, it gets 2k. So I like Pentagleam because if you're going to be calling things anyways as a retire target, this is free. Just throw it down, look at the top card. You can figure out, oh, is that a trigger? Cool. Not a trigger? Bottom. So it makes your drive checks, you know, less... Like, just about randomness, you know. It's still going to be random, you know, what the following card is going to be. But if you see a trigger and you want to keep it, you know you're going to get a trigger on top. Uh, you, This is also good just because if you kind of top deck into it through Karen, um, or if you top deck into it through, like, Blaster Javelin during the ride during the ride deck, it's nice to just pick. oh, it plays. I get to look at the top card and see what's there, you know. So can't go wrong, Pentagleam. It's also a 10k attacker, can't intercept, so free card. Free card is free. All right, now we're going on to grade ones. Uh, starting off, just going to go over the PGs. Uh, when this is placed on the guard circle, pick one of your units. And until the end of the battle, it can't be hit. And if you have two or more in hand, you discard one. So if you, you know, only got two in hand, you just go ditch one and one. It's a really good PG. So highly recommend if you guys don't got these PGs, you got to go get them. Next up. For the great ones, they brought back Karen. Karen's really good in this deck. Uh, Karen's skill is when this unit's placed on the rear guard circle. If you have a Vanguard Blaster in his name, rest this unit. Look at the top card of your deck, and if it's a unit card, call it to rear. And at the end of the turn, you have to retire the called unit. So um, obviously the goal of this card is you just throw it down, rest it. Whatever card's on the top of your deck, every card in this deck is a unit, so you will call it. And that's going to be your retire target for PBD skill as well. Just because through Karen, if you don't retire, you lose it anyways. So you might as well retire it through PBD. Um, but in, on top of that, and the point I was trying to get to is that with Maka, if you use Maka's skill, you find Karen, you call Karen. Karen's skill, you call another target. You just got a board basically through one card with a Soul Blast cost, which is really nice. So building a board is really easy in this deck. So retiring that board is not going to be too much of an issue. So there's kind of a give and take trade off with that, which I really like about this deck. Next up for grade ones to kind of help mitigate that retire cost, we got four copies of Witch of Pandering Brunner. Brunner skills if you have a Vanguard Blaster in its name, when it's retired by a card of cost, uh, it's regarded as two rear guards. So one of this is two. So if you have one of this on the board and you have Phantom Blast Dragon, just retire this and something else and you got your three cost. So you're not losing as many rear guards. You guys get the idea. We've had copies of this in the past. I think the G era Karen was the same uh, same thing, I believe it cost two, but I could be completely wrong. I believe it was Karen. 
But yeah, so you definitely want to run for this because being able to find this with Maka is also really helpful too. Lastly, uh, I am, this was a tough decision. I decided to just go with Blaster Javelins, my last two slots for the grade one lineup. Um, every other grade one is either just like a 10k booster, um, has a really bad skill, or uh, has a cause a soul blast cost, and I really don't want to abuse the soul blasting in this deck because I kind of want to conserve it for Maka, and I want to have it be for Phantom Blaster Dragon to keep pulling things out of the soul to build the board. And so I figured Blaster Javelin's not bad just because it ha keeps the 10k when it attacks, so that's nice. So if you have to throw Blaster Javelin in the front row as a 10k attacker, it works out. Um, but really, other than that, it's just kind of like a placeholder and also since Maka can only call grade ones or less having more grade ones in the deck is helpful in that regard as well so can't go wrong with that um since we are running multiple blasters in the deck you could run that one grade three that's when it's retired you counter blast one soul blast one uh and all your blasters get 5k only reason i didn't really feel like i wanted to run that card was just because i didn't see it whereas i felt like i was gonna have a consistently a front row or like a field full of blasters all the time that's just me and my play testing so i felt like the card was less consistent and i feel like it'd be better just kind of have consistency <laughs> i hope that makes sense so that was it for the normal units i'm going to go right into the triggers we got the boy our Noah. uh over trigger when you trigger check it 100 million power, you remove it from the game, draw a card. Additional effect when you drive check it is you perform drive checks for your rear guards. So like I said earlier with Blaster Dark, has twin drive. If you use its retire skill, if you have Fasado or another Phantom Blaster Dragon in the front row, that's going to have twin drive. So it's it's nice. You know, Armatino is, a, is better than just like giving two things 100 million power as the Cray Elemental. So good over trigger. On the main deck, uh, we got four uh, Gurgant um, for the crits, and we got four Dismas. Crits win games. Your Phantom Blaster Dragon has a crit on it when you use its skill. So if your opponent no guards, double critting for game is nice. You know, who doesn't love to just have your opponent at two? They say no guard at PBD, and it's crit, crit, GG. That's how budget decks become good. <laughs> Um, this next decision was kind of weird. Uh, usually I would go with the front triggers just for the shield and the power to the front row. I decided to go with draw triggers because, uh, resources and hand is one thing. Uh, I like the draw triggers in this deck just because, um, if I were to have to call it for PBD's effect, I don't feel like I'm losing much because of the 5k shield. Um, if I damage check it, drawing cards is helpful. Drive checking into it draws me more cards for resources to retire things. So I like the the Irfrid for for those reasons. Other reasons I believe fronts are a good decision as well is because you are going to be having a front row with like 15k and the 13k. So drive checking those front triggers helps make those a little more more threatening and they have to have guard for those. Um so that is a good reason to have that. You're pretty much always going to have a front row with this deck just because Maka, Blaster Dark, and Fasado, for the most part, have a consistent way of showing up in your front row. You, Your back row is, ends, ends up being one that's kind of get blown away by PBD skill anyway, so the front triggers do help in that regard. I'm just testing out the draws for now just because uh, drawing cards is nice and getting resources. So, But of course, run those fronts if you want more shield and power. Those work out too. And last but not least, four heals. Healing is good, helps you survive. So gotta run them four heal triggers. So that was pretty much it for the deck profile. Um, all I can really say is that the deck is fun, but it has a little bit of a com competi competitivity, competitivity, competitiveness, one of those words. There's a competitive issue with the deck in terms of like its performance for like the speed is the best way as I can really word it. So the minute that you ride into Phantom Blaster Dragon, you pull out that Blaster Dark, or if you want to pull out Blaster Javelin for the booster somewhere, like 
it's nice, um, but the minute you need to get the ball rolling is when you have to start like getting Maka in hand. So once you see Maka, you need to just keep that in your hand for the turn you're gonna go into PBD. Don't waste it when you ride Blaster Dark. It's not worth it because you need to start building your board really early. Your, your call target for Maka is clearly just going to be Karen. You know, Karen gets you another card, so that's going to be your retire targets. Um, yeah, all I can really say is that the deck is fun. The main focus of the deck is obviously just to kind of crit your opponent to death with PBD skill. Um, but other than that, that's really as far as the deck does in performance. Um, I know Phantom uh, Blaster Dragon has had a history in the past of doing a guard restrict skill, which has helped it in the past. So I understand how in the past that deck was good. But right now, since it's just kind of like the OG um, extra booster Phantom Blaster Dragon that just retired stuff for power and crit, it's kind of whatever. And shields are bigger now, so 10k in a crit is still kind of eh. Maybe 15k in a crit would have made it seem like a little bit more threatening just because a 28k attacker with fit, with a crit is pretty big. So, you know, that would have been nice. But for the most part, the PBDs, they're only like five bucks and this is like the only triple R in the whole deck. Um, that's not bad. So for a budget player, highly recommend you can pick up PBD as a fun little deck to play. It is a lot of fun uh, playing with it. So if you like... Shadow Paladin, you want to play a deck that's not that expensive at all to make for the most part. You don't really need the Fasados that much. If you don't want to run the Fasados, you could run that other great three that I was talking about earlier that's like every time you, uh, uh, or not every time, when it's retired, you kind of blast Soul Char, Soul Blast, sorry, uh, give all your blasters 5k, that's a good card too. So there's alternatives to building this deck, and if you want to keep it budget, you can keep it budget. Um, I just like Fasado for the consistency. So yeah, that's pretty much it for my deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed that. And if you have any comments, questions, uh, just feel free to put them down in the comment section. Uh, my name is Richard, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.